everyone. Welcome back to Painted. Um, as you might be able to tell from my strange positioning, I am sitting on the floor of my studio because I am working on a piece of furniture that is too big to set up on anything else I have in my place. So I created a space to put it on. Um, I have the cabinet that I think everybody saw me working on is what we'll be working on today. But before we get to that, I want to remind everyone that in a couple of weeks, uh, the IDAL convention is coming up for those not familiar with it. IDAL is International Decorative Artisans League. And the website for that is www.decorativeartisans.org. And the cool thing that's gonna happen there is if you're into any form of decorative painting, it's an organization uh, devoted specifically to the growth of the decorative arts industries. I will be teaching my fabulous furniture finishes class there at, uh, hmm, I'm trying to remember. It's uh, October 31st, Greensboro, North Carolina at the Grandover Resort and Convention Center. Uh, it's a one day class. It's an awfully cool thing to come and do. I'll be doing 10 finishes uh, the price is listed on the website. You have to register and book classes. And I do still have some room in my class, so I'd love to see you all there. And I'm gonna touch up here because somebody is sending me a text message that has absolutely nothing to do with anything. I love spam text messages. So, I have been crazy busy. Uh, my lives are fewer than they used to be simply because um, when you're starting a new business, you're not as free as a bird like you used to be to do painting on your free time, painting for your clients, all that sort of thing. But that is irrelevant, everything's going fine. And let's move into furniture. Now I'm a little in an odd position again. I'm on the floor, as I said. I'm gonna change the camera around so that you can see the side of the chest. And you can see the top is open at the moment. Um, and we, I explained last time why I am still leaving the hardware on there. Now these actually pieces here aren't actually hardware. They're molded pieces of decorative item. I'm gonna move this a little closer so that um, everybody can see a little better. Uh, I'm be, Being on the floor, I'm trying to get a good angle for you and one where I can still paint and not knock over the cam, uh, camera. And I think I'm taking all my light out there. Looks like I'm not getting much light. I have every light on and turned on on me. Here we go. All right, so if I'm not sure if you can see it vaguely, you should be able to see. I, to get the center of my side, I drew an X. Now, again, I'll repeat, I was doing this Mackenzie Child style, which if you've seen it has a lot of checkerboards, black, gold, white, red. So I want um, to get my checkerboard on here. I've, got a checkerboard stencil, nothing hard about that, but I'm not gonna count on this being my final shape. So what I'm going to do, after I got the center here, I placed my stencil so that I would be painting over the big black pencil mark. So when I pull this off, yes, there will be some pencil marks on here, but it'll be a little easier to clean off than the center one where everybody will kind of have their eyes focused. I placed it, I lined it up, I sprayed, put some spray adhesive on here to help keep it down. But because the stencil's bigger than the edges, you know, you're gonna have a little push up, so that's gonna require a little extra work. I am gonna use some set coat black, not that you can see what that is in this very messy jar I have. And I'm gonna put it a little bit on a plate. Very little. You can see very little. And I'm gonna take my stencil brush, swirl it in it, and then, pardon me for sticking my head over there. My paper towel went out of my reach. I have a piece of paper towel, and I'm gonna block this off a little bit. So I want a fairly dry brush. And I'm gonna swirl. Now, if I did a boo-boo here, and I might have, nope, it came out fine. I was afraid I hadn't, I had too much paint and that little mark there was actually a bleed, but it's not. So I'm just gonna swirl all over my stencil. I'm gonna hold it down when I get near the top. And 
and I'm not really looking for perfection here. Why? Because I'm going to hand brush these squares back in after I've laid the whole stencil out. And again, just a little bit of paint here. Hey, Chris, nice to see you. I'm not worried that this is at all flawed or imperfect, and you'll see why as soon as I get this mapped out. All right, it's, it's very exciting to watch me swirl paint in circles, I know. I'm just trying to keep my... Um, yeah, if you notice, I can paint with both hands a lot of times when I do stuff. The angle's weird, my arm's tired, it's too far a reach. I'm slightly ambidextrous after many years of practice. Um, don't ask me to do any fine painting with both hands, but big stuff. I can trowel with two hands. Um, I can do stuff like this. I can actually cut in a wall with both hands. Um, but what happens? My arms just get tired from holding up. The direction's odd, uncomfortable. And yeah, I know I should have my glass, my gloves on, but um, I'm okay without them right now. I'll survive. I'm only going to mess up my manicure. That's all. Nothing new there. And you can see, I'm not really being really careful about how I do my stenciling, how neat and tidy it is. I'm just sort of smearing it. I just want these squares marked in. I want anything that would act as any sort of registration mark on there so I can move this as when I'm ready to. Uh, um, yeah, it's a little hard to sit on the floor and paint and talk because as I bend over, it squeezes all the air out of me. And then it sounds like I, <coughs> that sounds like I'm grunting. Hey, Karen. Hi, Gigi. Nice to see you, ladies. Okay, so this looks, you know, kind of sloppy right now. So I'm going to take this off, and you can see my checkerboard is marked in. I'm going to turn the camera for a second. Hi, Karen. Hi, everybody. Hi, Jane. Nice to see you here. Okay, so you can see I've got my checkerboard marked in. And what these actually are, these little black marks, they're actually registration marks because then what will happen is I'm going to take my stencil and shift it over. Okay, let me put the brush down. I'm going to shift it towards me first and then I'll shift it towards the camera second. Let's get this moved over just a little so it's not way off the edge here. there. Yeah, that'll work. Sorry, I'm just checking my registration marks, making sure I'm right on everything. And of course, I've lost my other little tiny piece of tape, so I'll have to take one off the edge of my desk. So, there we go. I'm going to take some more very little. So I, I poured out maybe a tablespoon and a half and I've already done most of this with, oh, I don't know. I say like just a, maybe a quarter of a teaspoon to do all of this. And I'm just tapping in my squares. And like I said, I am, I am far from concerned that this is perfect. See, I have these little registration. I, I, this is my first time working with this stencil and I think it's got some odd registration marks, but that's all right because guess what? By the time I'm done, you won't even see it. And let's get this replaced over here. in 
just right. There's that. There's that. All right. So again, I'm back with paint and stencil brush. And don't wet your stencil brush until you're done with all of this, because once the stencil brush, brush is wet and it's got moisture on it other than the paint, it soaks all the way up to the ferrule and um, ruins the brush for another color. If you need to only have one stencil brush and you need to switch between colors, rub all the paint out of it, dry brush all the paint out, and then um, use another color. All right, let's make sure I got it all there. Okay, so like I said, I got my checkerboard pattern here. I've got my pencil marks. I'm not worrying about them. And the next thing I'm going to do, Mackenzie Childs has a very hand-painted look. Mackenzie Childs style of furniture has extremely hand-painted. The squares are not perfect. They're well marked in, but they are not perfect. So I'm taking a square brush and some set coat, and I'm gonna start hand painting my squares. And is this time consuming? You bet it is. But it's part of the look. And I need to sit a little closer. I've sat back for the camera, but now I'm, I'm actually sitting too far away from my hand to be steady. And if I don't like this brush, I have a smaller one. So I can go back in and I can sharpen up my edge a little bit. In my paintbrushes today, and I had this grand awakening that I have a lot of filberts, which are the rounded tip brushes, and I have a lot of rounds, which are the conical brushes, but I have very few flats which are this chisel end shape. So I'm going in and I'm hand painting back all of these squares. And I'll wait for it to dry and I may have to go back a second time. That wouldn't be unusual. Um, hand painted style is time consuming but to make it the way you want to, you have to commit the time to it. And I don't care if the squares are absolutely perfect because again, the style I'm going for, for is really not perfect. I'm just trying to set myself up clean edges to work within. And I want uh, it to be a little more folk art looky than perfect. I can, I can live with a lack of perfection. God knows I already have for decades. If I were perfect, I would be painting a lot faster and my lines would always be straight. And I'm not using any particular sorry, get my face up here. I'm not using any particular direction with my brushes. I'm just filling in where I see it needs filling. And again, I can go back with another brush if I don't feel like I'm happy with the way this is all laying out when it dries. There's more brushes in the world. I can fix it. That's the beauty of hand painted. Hand painted, I, I think sometimes our clients misunderstand the difference between painted and hand painted. Hand painted has inherent, inherent flaws that are part of the beauty of the work. Exactly, Shay, imperfect is perfection. You want people to see that you've put your hand to this and that it is slightly flawed. It's like hand woven fabric. There, there's gonna be irregularities, it's beautiful that way. That's why hand painted is 
such a rarity now in our machine created world. All right, let me see if I can get that spot. Part of it is I'm at an odd angle where I'm normally sitting. Um, normally I kind of wrap myself in weird positions around a piece of furniture to get my hand exactly where I want it. And because I'm trying to do this so you can see what I'm doing, uh, I'm, I'm not in my old lady like this position because that's not really the most fun way to watch somebody you know, look at my ear for 40 minutes. Oh boy, what how lucky you are. Uh, and the other thing is, um, because I'm generally left-handed, I start from the right side. Why am I doing that? So that my hand doesn't drag through the paint. Um, and if I had really thought about this, I probably would have started on the other side because the start points are usually where your biggest flaws are. And so by the time I get to over here, I'll be in a nice rhythm. So I'll have to clean up whatever mess I've made over here. Uh, on the front of this, because it's such a weird, um, I shouldn't say weird, unusual medallion composition, I'm gonna have to not worry about center. I'm just gonna have to put the stencil on and hope for the best because it has the medallion in the center and it has um, some raised molding in the center and the front. So there's a, there's a lot of stuff that goes on there. Um, here we go. And then, then I have these challenges of these strange, you know, little indoor, uh, uh, decorative spots on here that I have to fight my way around and then once I've done all this I will determine whether or not I actually need to go in here I'm pretty sure I do but let me make my own life easier and get the already marked spots and the fun, other fun part is my foot falls asleep <laughs> so I have to shift a lot I, I'm generally not a floor painter I prefer on chairs so that you know my feet don't fall asleep I'm sure anybody who's been doing this for a while has had their feet go completely out on them while they were working on something. I've been in such strange positions over the years. Um, when I was still doing a lot of walls, bathrooms were always the challenge. And inevitably, my head was behind someone's toilet because uh, I know a lot of people took toilets off. Um, I'm not a gifted plumber, so I couldn't take them off. And sometimes my clients were cheap and didn't want to pay for a plumber to come and take it off. So I had to do a lot of interesting positions to get things done. But toilets were uh, have have always been the, one of the biggest challenges. That and the tops of walls over cabinets that don't go all the way up. Um, I don't know whoever told a builder that it was a good idea to leave that open area up there for me. I've always thought it was nothing but a Dutch dust catcher and if they just made the cabinets a little longer, I'd actually have more functional storage space. But of course, that's the world according to Maury and um, we all know that doesn't always happen. Yeah, so now I'm starting to get sort of a, a rhythm in what I'm doing. A feel for how it's gonna lay, where I need to go back. You know, and I've got a kind of a, a blurb spot, spot there. That's okay, I'll go in and touch it up either with set coat white or neutral white mix and clean everything up. I'm okay with that. I really wish I hadn't done this square. Now my hand has to go up here, and I have to try not to put my hand in it. I know there's companies that hand paint stuff overseas. Hand paint, meaning that one person does one stroke repeatedly over and over and over again, and God bless them for it. I'd probably be perfect, painting perfect squares by now if I, that was all I did every day. But instead, I have to come up with other ways. And yeah, I could have done the measuring and taping, but I'm not crazy. 
I don't want to do that, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, I don't know what I was going to say. I had a brilliant thought in my head, and like most of my brilliant thoughts, it ran away fast. You know how it is when you have, think you know something. It's the same thing as walking into a room and not being able to remember why you came in. You have these genius ideas, and then all of a sudden, you can't remember them the second you, your mind wandered for a moment. And that's pretty much me. I have lots and lots of ideas. Um, just to fill everybody in where the store is going, um, tomorrow we have town inspection happening, which means that the town comes over and it's as a part of the town issuing business licenses. They come over and inspect the space and tell you if it's okay to open as it is or what you have to do to open it. And since I already know what has to happen, we've already prepared for that. But then as soon as they're done and they file the inspection, then my builder can file for the permits. And if anybody knows anything about building, permits can take as long to get as the building itself does. So hopefully, They'll move quickly on permits, and then I'll be able to get my contractors in to build out and clean up, and because there's nasty carpeting on the wall uh, floor that is even stinkier because there had been some water leakage, which of course my landlord has taken care of. And I don't want carpets in a painting studio anyway. I want floors that I can spill stuff on and not have it be an issue. So I'm working on that, and I worked on getting the various vendors in line for some of the items that I'm going to be selling, and I will continue painting with faux effects always and teaching for faux effects, but be, I can't vend them because I am in uh, Sherry Zeman's territory. And, she has a wonderful studio, but I can continue to teach. So we'll be holding classes so you can learn lots of killer finishes for both furnitures and furnitures. Me speak English good today. Um, for furniture and walls. And let's see. Uh, is your brick and mortar re going to be retail space, workspace, or both? Will you be teaching there? Uh, yes, actually, I will be doing all of the above. I will be taking on commissions there to, for clients for furniture pieces. I will be retailing paint products and some of my painted furniture. And I will be teaching there. So there's going to be a whole lot of stuff going on. And it's going to be everything from beginner level to expert level. And, you know, I'll bring in happy DIYers who can't wait to paint things and some of our experts who teach at a higher level and paint at a higher level will have access to the facility so there's a whole lot happening hey Lauren nice to see you hello from Hers well hello Hershey Pennsylvania to, to Chicago so I'm gonna put back so you can see what I'm doing and you see it's I'm about to here you can see this is where I started with the stenciling, so that's probably why it's the darkest um, stenciled square. But I don't know if you can see this close up. Let me see if I can make it close up. Here we go. You can see where I stenciled, you know, the colors uneven and kind of swirled. And then you can see here where I hand painted where the colors more opaque, but the lines are imperfect. I'm actually okay with the imperfect lines. I will, whoa, sorry about that. I'm gonna get that screen smaller. Um, I will, um, be going in with the neutral white set coat. Well, actually, I blended neutral white and white to get right in there as a creamy white um, to clean up some edges, make it look a little more hand painted all the way around. This is this is not a quick one. 
this some of my pieces you know I get the finish in boom 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 and you know I'm just in between times letting things dry this is a lot of hand painting it's gonna take a little while these are the pieces that I am um, I have no issues charging good money for it don't ask me what I charge for things because um, what I charge is different than what's what can both be tolerated in your market and also it a lot of the things depend on your experience too um, you know I've said it before I've been in this business a long time uh, there are people who are who've been doing this longer than I am but uh, not many I am in February March I celebrate my 29th anniversary as a decorative artist holy crap as a professional de decorator I will say that because that's from the first time I ever sold furniture and stuff let me see if I can get that out a little bit and now I'm gonna put the camera back on here because I'm sure it's more entertaining at least to watch me paint black on a checkerboard than it is to look at the side of my head while I talk uh, unless you were admiring my earrings which you know frankly I don't blame you they're awfully cute um, of course if anybody has any questions about the products I'm using once again I'm using black set coat um, I use set coat because it dries hard it's interior exterior rated when it dries it has the leveling out sheen of an oil paint versus the slightly more coarse um, and absorbent surface of an interior latex acrylic paint things although there is really no such thing as latex paint anymore almost every interior paint is now acrylic in one form or another but people are so used to saying latex that even when the formulations change they'll still call it latex if you're concerned, if you have latex allergies when you buy paint, talk to the paint dealer. Make sure that they tell you whether there is actually any latex resin in there. Usually the answer is no. Um, or you just simply ask for 100% acrylic. And you can see. I love doing stuff like this. I find it really relaxing, except when I'm on a deadline. Then it's not, not only is it not relaxing, but I make huge mistakes. So I'm happy with the way this is coming out. It's uneven. Even the colors are a little uneven. I'll try to go back in and patch some of that up. Um, that's not what I want to do. Um, but that's part of handmade, handmade, hand painted. It's very, very uneven, very irregular. And I still have these little spots to do down here. And I still have the little spots to deal with up here. And I will, maybe not while you're all watching me. Because if I mess them up, <laughs> I don't really want an audience. I think for me sometimes especially when I work with stencils and I put these you know clean lines down and then I kind of go in and make them unclean uh, I struggle with that a little bit you know my German ancestry says no no go back and clean it up it's not straight um, my grandfather was first generation American on my mother's side was an engineer and he was he, he didn't do anything without a ruler in his hand to make sure all the lines were straight and it made him nuts when my art projects that I did down in his basement were imperfect and I liked them and now as an adult I can feel that stuff coming out in me and wanting to make it all perfect <laughs> and I can't do that. I'm human. Oh my gosh. Again, feel free. Ask any questions. Um, once I've done all the painting, gotten this all sealed up, 
colored up perfect way I want. I'll be going back into these medallions and um, painting the details on them. All the messy mess that's on there right now will be gone. Uh, just for a, an FYI, my lives, while they had been really busy for a while, as I progress with my new exciting things, my lives may become more infrequent because I am often, you know, I've been trying to do this live for three days now. And every single time I've tried to do it, I've gotten called into something that had to deal with um, the new retail storefront studio space. And uh, I kind of expect it to be that way for a while until, you know, I get in there, we've opened the doors, people have shown up a few times. Yes, now you, Carrie, yes, now you know why Mackenzie Childs is so expensive. I, if you Google Mackenzie Childs and do close-ups on their pieces, you know, they have their line, you can sometimes see them in the pieces that they have their lines marked out like I did here, but they're very imperfect. And whoever's doing them, there's not just one person doing this. They have a production set up so that... <laughs> There's a whole bunch of people painting squares all at once. Carrie is taking my fabulous furniture finishes class at Idol in Greensboro, North Carolina. I'm very excited. Carrie's darling, she's on our eyeball, uh, eyeball, sorry, Carrie, Idol um, board of directors or board of officers. I don't know if they're calling that board of directors. Um, don't ask me to get my words right when I'm actually trying to concentrate on painting. And she's also taking my class and is one of the nicest people on the face of the earth. So I'm excited to have her there. So uh, any of you watching this now or later, definitely check out IDOL, Decorative Artisans League www.decorativeartisans.org and come sign up for my class. I got a couple spaces left. Um, we're just over three weeks away from now. From now, from it now. From it now. Me, again, having issues with my English today. Um, and it's going to be a really fun convention. There's nothing like going to a place where everybody's speaking the same language you do and understands the kind of stuff you're talking about and if they don't understand it they want to know about it and they can't wait to hear um, it's really fun you get classes in furniture spray cabinetry spraying classes uh let's see what else canvases floors Italian plasters, uh, cement-like finishes, epoxy finishes. By the way, I will be carrying a line of epoxy products that are going to be very exciting. I'm not telling you about them now because, quite frankly, I haven't ordered them yet because I don't want to fill up my dining room with products while I'm waiting for room because I can't put it here. I actually have to work in my studio until... I open up elsewhere. Oh, also another fun thing is, um, you may remember her from uh, past, being here with me on lives in the past. A uh, dear friend of mine, Camille Lilbask, is coming to stay with me for a few weeks. She's looking to make some big career and life changes and she wants to be here and help me open new space and learn more about painting and she's going to function as my assistant for a little while. Um, as she says, just don't ask her how to do anything because she may not know. That's my job. I can't guarantee you she'd give you the actual accurate information, but she's good. She knows when she doesn't know something. <sighs> All right. 
Oh, Carrie, glad to see you. Sandra, nice to see you here too. So, you know, we've, we've you probably spent half an hour or so watching me paint squares. Now you understand. Hand painted takes time. And I'm not even gonna try to go back in and clean this up with the white and stuff right now. My first is to go in, block all the squares around on all sides, not the back. I think I'm just gonna, gonna keep the back on this one just black, simpler. I don't, I thought about it, but I really don't plan to have it be something where it's gonna be showing. Um, but I'll block out all the checkerboard on the whole thing paint it all in, then come back, touch up any of the black that needs to be touched up, and then go around and touch up the white. Because to me, that is the easiest and most sensible way to go around. And it, you know, this, some of this stuff, this, these pieces, I realize, I got a couple messages. Why didn't you take those decorative pieces off? Guess what? They don't come off. They're glued on. If I tried to pry them off, I would have just broken them. So they are really wanting to be a part of the finish. And I'm just not going to fight them. Um, I know when I use, connect this little piece here, that little extra jig jog stencil piece, let me see if I can get it so it's zoomed in. You see this little extra piece that's where, like I said, it had a strange registration mark um, that I haven't really figured out yet. Um, so I'm just painting all the way to it black. And I know that makes it a slightly longer, more rectangular shape than square, but guess what? I don't have to care either. It just makes it hand painted. And I gotta fight to get down in here. Lee. If you don't like this work, don't do this pattern. If you like this work like I do, just relish it. Now normally when I'm doing this, I'm not talking nonstop like I'm trying to do here because quite frankly, it's really boring just to watch somebody paint squares. Um, I usually have, I don't even have music on because I find that the beat of the music makes me sing along and then I get distracted and I, um, I don't paint as neatly. <laughs> I kind of bounce with the beat, but um, let's get back at her a little bit. Um, I usually have a movie or some sort of Netflix show or something like that going on in the background and then my hand is much more steady. So let me see if I can get these little pieces down here. Of course, my finger's sticking to the tape too. And they're not perfect, but I'll clean them up. Don't, don't do the ambidextrous thing if you really aren't doing, if you're not okay with that. <laughs> it took me a lot of years to be able to do what I just did. Now, the funny thing is, my sister was so terminally left-handed she couldn't eat and eat with her right. Whereas I can paint like this both-handed. I can obviously eat like a right-handed person, for those of you who sat and had a meal with me, but I also could play golf right-handed. I was never played golf left-handed, and I tend to throw 
right-handed too. Um, I don't know whether that means I'm a poor creative soul or a better balanced business person. I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it too much. It's that right brain, left brain thing. I'm going to need a different brush to clean that up. And then all right, I'm going to get up here. brush with a better tip in it than the one I've got. Chisel edge flat is not going to make a nice neat space for me. But I'll, I'll survive. It'll get it in the way I need it in. So at least later when I come back, I'll know where everything is. So here's the hand-painted checkerboard. Very time-consuming. Really beautiful. Really worth it. Um, I know this was an unusual kind of unusual time, unusual setup. Um, right now, I, unless I come up with something that I have time with, I will not be doing any uh, full-on FE demos for a while because I've got so much else to to create and to paint. Um, I'm just sharing techniques and and tips and styles right now, and uh, I appreciate everybody being here. It's been a, a great week. And I hope you all are rolling into a wonderful first full fall weekend. It's so exciting. And the weather's cooling off. Nobody's steaming in their studios anymore. And I hope you all have a great day. Thanks for coming and sitting with me. Bye.